Adult acne, it can affect women in their 30s, their 40s, even beyond. The problem might not just be your skin, the problem could be your hormones. Dr. Steve Jepson is here to explain. Many women experience acne even if they didn't suffer from it as a teenager. Oh, and I hear it all the time. Women 30s, 40s, even into the 50s um, are suffering and sometimes it gets worse as the years go on and they've been to their doctors and they've been to their dermatologists and they, they can't get the answers that they, they expect. They can't get their acne fixed. A lot of them come in and say, you know what, I tell the doctors that it's hormonal, but they don't really know what to do about it. Well, we're going to tell them what to do about it. And you say most of the time, most of the time it is hormonal. Yeah, I think most of the time adult female acne, there is a hormonal cause for it. I think there's three different hormonal causes, and we're going to talk about each of those three. First, progesterone deficiency. Right. Progesterone deficiency is a common problem. can start in the teens, but I see it more frequently in the 30s, 40s, 50s. This is a problem that as time goes on, your ovaries don't produce as much progesterone, and one of the effects of that can be acne. Progesterone has a anti-oil producing effect and so if you don't have enough progesterone around your skin tends to produce more oil the the pores tend to clog and you tend to get acne especially that deep cystic acne and a clue to progesterone acne related acne is that that it's associated with your menstrual cycle mm -hmm. so if you have acne kind of a week before or two weeks before your period but no other time of the month then it's probably related to your progesterone and you also often will have PMS associated with it as well so what's the solution there? so the solution is simply to take some natural progesterone. I have women cycle it. They usually skip the first week of their cycle. They take it the rest of their cycle. They need to take natural progesterone, though. A lot of times the artificial progesterone, such as Provera or the progesterone that are in birth controls or in the IUDs, actually can make progesterone deficiency-related acne worse. And that's something that I think women and doctors also tend to, to default to sometimes is that birth control. Yeah, in use, this situation, it's not going to help. Right. And there are women that come in and they say, you know what, they gave me birth control, but it made my acne worse. That's a good clue that that could be a problem. Second issue, testosterone excess. Testosterone excess is a common problem in younger women, um, 20s, 30s, sometimes see it up into the 40s where either they're making too much testosterone from their ovaries or they have an enzyme in their skin called DHT, which causes their skin to be more reactive to the testosterone testosterone that they do have. This is usually an acne that lasts month long. It's usually an acne that's associated with problems on the back and on the chest. Mm -hmm. And often there's um, excess hair growth associated with that, but not always. So what do you do? So there's a very useful prescription called spironolactone, which is a type of medicine that actually blocks the formation of that, of that hormone in your skin and so stops the formation of those oils and can be very, very effective for this type of acne. This is also the kind of acne that birth control pills work for. But I only really recommend birth control in this situation if the woman also needs it for birth control because birth control pills have a lot of other side effects associated with them. So spironolactone is usually my first choice for this kind of acne. You wouldn't recommend using birth control just to clear up the face? Wouldn't recommend it just for controlling the face. Okay, third issue, stress and cortisol excess. I think, I think most women notice that in times of stress, they get a breakout. Mm -hmm. um, that's pretty common. And so that's because stress causes the formation of a hormone called cortisol. And cortisol all will cause production of oil and will cause acne. Some women have chronic stress. I think a lot of us have chronic stress. And, and in that situation, it can kind of cause prolonged acne. Mm -hmm. And in that situation, there are things that can be done to control it. Usually, I always recommend exercise as being the number one cortisol-reducing, stress-reducing okay. treatment. Um, and so stress-related acne, try and increase your exercise. There's a supplement called phosphatidylserine that can help lower your cortisol and is something that I recommend in stress-related acne. Acne. And then finally, I always remind people, drink enough water in that situation. That kind, of, that kind of washes that cortisol out of your system and helps calm down that kind of acne. So it sounds like the key is to identify what you're experiencing and why your skin's reacting to it, and you can help people do that. Right. So there's different forms of hormonal acne, so it requires a, a history. You have to know what the woman's menstrual history is, what her past experience has been, what time of the month it affects her, but it's something that we can do. Then we can test for those hormone levels, and then depending on which situation it is, we can simply write a prescription and fix it and do it without antibiotics, which I think are overprescribed for acne. UDMPC.com is Dr. Jepson's website, and you'll find all the content information, information there. We'll link you there from our website, as well as simple testing to determine what you need to do to treat your skin appropriately. Great information, Steve. Thank you so much. Thank you. Coming up, we've heard